is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno, Mike, how are you? Doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. Good to see you. We've got your partner in crime, dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm great, Mark. Happy to be here. Excellent. We've got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are you? I'm well. How are you, Mark? Great, great. Uh, good to see you. We've got Eric, the technician Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. I'm ready for boot camp in a couple of days, even though this is going to come out after boot camp, but uh, it's just around the corner. I know. I know. I've, I've been thinking about it incessantly. I'm so excited. Um, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Life is good, man. Can't complain. Good to see you. Oh, by the way, if anybody wants to see how Tate works, go to landgeek.com forward slash lots. Look over Tate's shoulder. It's going to make you a better land investor and a better cyclist. Last but not least, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Let's get geeky. Deal of the week. What is the deal of the week, Scott Todd? What I always say is you pick a property that you want to market that week and uh, you send it out to your list. Even if your list has one person on there, it doesn't matter how many people are on your list, you're mailing a list, you're mailing a property to everybody on your list and you're making them an offer. I don't care if you did the deal of the week to the same property last week, change it up, change up something else. But from that deal of the week, you can get some pretty cool uh, ideas on how to improve, I think. I'd like to see what everybody else has to think too. So this is called the, the Larry Overstreet principle. Even if you have one person on your list, you should be mailing at least once a week, a deal of the week to your buyer's list. How do you build up a buyer's list? Well, when you're advertising on Facebook or Craigslist or landmoto.com, you get a lead, you put that lead into your um, CRM, or your ES, I guess your email service provider, like an AWeber, Constant Contact, um, MailChimp, I don't know, whatever Eric Peterson uses, which is super geeky. Uh, Eric, what are you using? ConvertKit. ConvertKit, and get all the geeky tools there, and then send that email out, and that is the deal of the week. But what the topic is for this week's roundtable is after you send out that email, there is some good data, some good metrics. And so, Mike Zano, why don't we start with you, Mr. <laughs> Automate with Python. How do you evaluate the, the efficacy of your deal of the week? What do you then do with it? So I'm not super geeky on this part. Although, see, I, this is what I love about Land Geek is that, you know, even a a firefighter such as myself can slowly get geeky over time. So I'm always learning from those around me, especially those on the podcast today. So I'm going to stay real basic things. Like if it doesn't sell, like, you know, there's a reason why it doesn't sell. And I, I think this sort of points backwards towards um, how you price your, your deals in the first place. So I guess I'll just throw that out there. Maybe not quite the answer you're looking for, but since I'm not super geeky on my analytics, um, I think I throw this out. So, you know, we charge dock fees, we charge down payments. If you didn't have a dock fee, if you didn't have a down payment, it doesn't really leave any room for a super awesome deal of the week. Because the whole idea behind the deal of the week is that you're going to offer those people on your buyers list something substantially, uh, some, some substantial savings, right? So that could be no dock fee, half off that dock fee, no down payment. But if you're always pricing like you're the guy that's uh, zero down, you know, just pay me first payment doesn't leave you a ton of flexibility to engage. And I guess I bring that up because if your deal isn't selling, well, maybe your deal, the analytic could be very simple. You didn't give them a good deal. Like you promise these people that you're going to put them on your buyers list and you're going to give them the great uh, you know, access to deals before you hit the market. But then you don't really throw anything at them. They're like, well, you know, they don't feel super special now, do they? They want to feel special. So I guess I'll start with that. And I know everybody else is going to go super geeky and I will be taking notes. But I think that you need to price it accordingly in the beginning to leave room for these super awesome deals. 
I'm I, I think what, I think what you said it, it may not be technically super geeky, but it, it's it's geeky as far as being very very strategic in marketing and having a very good marketing strategy from the get go. Because if you're not strategic about it from the get go, then you're right. Like you're gonna burn your list out. They're not gonna trust that this is a deal right. in the first place. So yeah. um, strategy is important. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you, you know, I'll give credit where credit's due, even if it's Eric Peterson, I will give credit. Um, Scott Bossman, <laughs> how about you? So we do a few simple things. We keep track of, of open rate, click rate, that type of thing on a particular, on, on all of our uh, deal of the weeks. And I haven't been in air table and we have the highest rated ones. So, um, we kind of keep track of the best ones that we've ever had. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll go back to that design or that type of title. Uh, and, and we've had some really good open rates lately, uh, just kind of following that type of, you know, uh, trend, I guess. Um, the biggest thing for us is just, uh, you know, admittedly, I'd say three years ago, I wasn't very consistent with our deal of the week emails. And then we just became more and more consistent. So I actually looked at this data recently um, in 2019, 7% of our sales came from our deal of the week or our buyers list, uh, that, that year last, last year, 10%, uh, came from that. And I think we were just very consistent with, with hitting our buyers list with a deal of the week. And then we do kind of a Sunday blast as well. So we're hitting them a couple times a week. And, and for us, for us, that's important. And since we've been really consistent with doing that. Um, it's, it's really made a really made a difference. I think, I think you brought up an interesting metric as well, which I don't think we've ever talked about on the round table is what day you actually send that deal of the week. So are you sending it on a Sunday or are you sending it on a Friday? What, what day do you, um, email? So yeah, we actually, and, and send what a, time? Yeah, we send a Wednesday morning deal of the week. And then we send a Sunday morning kind of blast uh, with a list of all of our properties on it. Okay. Or a number of our properties on it. Try not and to inundate them. So. Between Wednesday and Sunday, do you notice open rates are pretty similar and click rates are pretty similar or is it very different? Uh, I would say our, our Sunday opens are a lot better. Um, and I'm not quite sure. I think that's because, uh, I have a VA that's pretty clever with some, some headlines and we're getting some opens on the Sunday email versus, you know, the deal of the week email is more catered to one property. And I think it just doesn't maybe cater to our, uh, our buyers list as much. So we're not getting as many opens on the deal of the week. Okay. Okay. Um, does it bother you? Does the open rate bother you on the deal of the week or is it? more troublesome the click rate um it doesn't really bother me either way i guess uh what what i love about what i love about it is i've outsourced it i don't do it i don't think about it so um we you know we'll look at the the data occasionally um but again i'm not too geeky on that end no that, that's great nothing makes me happier that, <laughs> yeah. that you know that you're, you're not doing that um right. Taria, put in your reps, Harris. What, uh, what about you? So we do something similar. We do track the open rates, the click rates, um, but we found um, the larger our buyers list got that for us, it worked better to almost segment our deals of the week. So if we have a deal in you know, California, then we would segment it and send that out to our California you know, buyers list. Um, we found just blasting, you know, a deal out. We didn't get the open rates we were looking for. Just, you know, blind copying it to everyone on our buyers list. That wasn't working. So once we started segmenting it, like, you know, this is a deal for, you know, Colorado and our Colorado buyers got it. We noticed our click rates went up, our open rates went up um, and we got a little more traction. Uh, we also send out the deal of the week on a Wednesday. And then we go back in Friday and resend and we'll change it up a little bit, but we'll send it to the same list, but only to the people who didn't open the first time. So, 
hoping that maybe, you know, they didn't see it, you know, maybe got buried. We hope to get them the next time. So we look for good open and click rates on Wednesday, but then we look to improve those some on Friday um, and pray that it don't get thrown in someone's spam. But that's how we manage our deal of the week. Will you change the headline up from Wednesday to Friday? Yes. You will change it. Okay. Yes. And then what email service provider do you use? MailChimp. MailChimp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes if it's a small sub list, we'll just send right out a follow up boss. Okay. Right and then the so what? So let's say you've got five properties, you've got one in Texas, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, Florida. Mm -hmm. Will you send five different deals of the week for all those five properties, all five segmented to people in those states? No, typically we don't. Um, we'll okay. send maybe two like this week or maybe two the following week. But yeah, I, I don't know if I want to manage five at one time, but yeah, we'll send maybe two most. Okay. I mean, hopefully you're using Bossman's VA for that. I, I need to ask Bossman about that VA. <laughs> <laughs> Our VA is nice. okay, but not that sharp. All right. Tate Litchfield, what are you looking at? Uh, I email a lot. Uh, I guess that's the that's the takeaway. I send a lot of uh, deal of the week email blasts. Typically, we send our first one out on Tuesday. We follow up Thursday. We send it again on Saturday and a final call on Sunday. So we might send that follow that email up to four times in a week. Uh, we learn from the data that we receive uh, based on those broadcasts. So, for example, if we mail it on Tuesday, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go in Wednesday morning. And we're going to see who is expressing the most interest in that property, either with opens or uh, you know, clicks or things like that. And then we're going to reach out to them personally. We're going to see if there's anything we can do to help close that deal. And as a result, our buyers list is very, very active. Um, they buy a lot of land from us and we're really grateful for them. Uh, we get multiple situations where somebody will want to buy the property and be a little late to it and they'll have to settle for something else. So, uh, the deal of the week is uh, a key part of any land business. I think if you neglect your buyer's list, they're going to end up shopping elsewhere. If they end up on my list, you're in trouble, man. You're in big trouble because I'm emailing them. I'm their buddy. Now, does it ever boomerang back to you because you're emailing so much to this list that they'll go on, let's say, Land Moto, they'll see maybe your ad on Facebook mm -hmm. and be like, oh, you know, these guys are, I bet I could get this, you know, for 99 down because I just saw this deal of the week on something similar. Why don't I just email them and see if I can do it? What, we, does that ever happen to you? Like choose to work with Eric over me? No, no, we know that one happened. But no, like they'll just they'll see that. they'll see your ad, and then they're like, "I'm on his list. I want a better deal because I'm always getting these see, deals of the week." Yeah, I mean, we'll have people who call us and say, "Look, uh, what's the best you can do?" And and the response is always the same: make us an offer. Make us an offer. Any reasonable offer is uh, something we'll consider. So just because we throw out a price, I mean, at the end of the day, we want to sell land and uh, we want to work with you and we want to earn your business. And if we have to adjust the terms a little bit, we're not opposed to it. But for the most part, we're giving you a great price. We're fair. We're uh, competitively priced. And uh, if you don't want to buy it, someone else will. I, I, I love it. I love it. Um, the technician. Eric Peterson. Yeah. How do you, so, how do you uh, think about this? First of all, I mean, we all know that Tate knows how to sell land. So I follow his strategy for the deal of the week very closely. Um, our processes are nearly identical with a few minor changes. Um, but what am I looking at um, with each deal that goes out, um, first of all, we always A-B test our headlines. Um, every email, every original email that goes out gets A-B tested with headlines. Um, when we send that, <clears throat> that follow-up email um, to the people that didn't open the first one, we choose the winning headline. 
from the previous email. And then right. on the Saturday email, two different headlines again that we're A-B testing. So, so we're always trying to learn what our buyers list is attracted to in terms of our headlines. Um, we're tracking, you know, which deals of the week sell. Um, we're keeping an ongoing list of our top 10 headlines from our deals of the week. Um, of course, we're looking at open rate and click through rate and all that other stuff that everybody talked about. But um, that's, that's probably about it. I mean, I think the maybe the one of the main things we're doing different is we're, we're trying to tabulate um, amongst all of our headlines, you know, what's what's the top 10 list from that headline. And, um, you know, it's it's helpful as we craft new headlines. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. I love the fact that you're A-B testing. And for those of you listening that don't know what an A-B test is, so headline A will be, um, you know, I love big lots and I cannot lie. And that will go to 50% of Eric's list. And headline B might be, don't tell my wife. And that'll go to the other 50% of the list. And then he'll see by the open rate, which headline of, the, of those in his overall list had more opens. So if 60% um, open headline A, then he knows the next time he emails, he's going to just use that headline because it's more effective than the second headline. And that's really effective marketing. And once you get to a certain level, you can A-B test all types of things with your list, not just the headline. You can A-B test down payments. You can A-B test price. You can A-B test terms. You can A-B test um, format, fonts. I mean, any little change, you can see um, clearly which one would win. And big companies do this all the time and um, with, with all types of elements. But just the most basic, I think, is what Eric is doing is super effective. And um, if you're not doing it, you should, I don't wanna say should, you should, well, I don't know any other way to say it. I highly recommend it. I highly Most recommend it. Most of the times it. you can do that with your email marketing software. That's not necessarily going to be a manual process. Right, right. Um, Scott Todd, what do you think of this topic? Um, I, I mean, I think it's pretty good. One of the things, Mark, that, that we do is we will, and it's almost like what Eric said, like, look, you can come up with these headlines. And what's cool is like, I know Eric uses ConvertKit. I use ConvertKit. What's cool about ConvertKit is you can come in there and, and put in two headlines that you think you want to run with. And what ConvertKit does is they send out um, one, one headline to 15% of the list and the other headline to the other to another 15%. So now you've got 30% of the of your list getting one of these two headlines. And it watches it for a couple of hours. And then at like the two hour mark, it declares a winner. And then it sends the other 70% of the list the winner. So it's, it's, as Eric said, the software is doing it for you. But see, to us, what we like to do with the uh, Land Moto Deal of the Week is we like to go back and look at it. And we start, we'll go back and look at the headline that we use because the headline that we use drives a lot of the click rates. And so we'll go back and we'll, we'll write down the headlines and we keep an ongoing list of the headlines and what the click rate was and the open rate was, ultimately our goal is not to click. I don't really care about the clicks. I care about the open. Uh, I'm sorry. Not no, 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 you don't care about opens. You want clicks. Yeah, I don't care about the opens. Right. I care about the click. Got it confused. I care about the click because I want the click going back to the Land Moto website. So uh, which headline is getting us the most clicks? And when we look at that, we then go back and start to break down, like, why, why was this one successful? Was it, was it a verb that we used? Was it nouns that we use? Was it something like, did we, did we have them feeling something? Did we kind of miss the cue on it? So we're constantly going back every week and we're kind of learning from that headline because the headline alone can drive a lot of the, the result that we want. 
And I think that everybody has to do that. I think that one of the things that you have to do with all of your marketing is you've got to not just look at, hey, I'm putting this ad out there and you think that that ad is like the miracle ad. And a lot of times people will think that. They'll, they'll say, well, I wrote an ad, but I didn't get any responses. So it must be Craigslist's fault or Facebook's fault or whatever's fault. It's not the platform's fault, it's your fault, right? Like your messaging is off. If you're if there's traffic to a place and you're not getting it, it's your message. So go back and analyze what you're writing. How are, how are your customers or the readers seeing this thing? Starts with the headline, starts with the picture. It's, it's all of that all together. And I think that that's when you start to go back and analyze what you're doing from marketing after the fact and start to think about it. Now all of a sudden you become a marketing powerhouse. Yeah, it's, it's so well said. And, and these things are, especially if you're a beginner at this, are so important to get that data because, you know, we aren't naturally, I don't think, wired to start thinking like someone else. We are constantly sort of just in our own heads. And until you start doing these tests and these, these experiments of stepping outside of yourself and thinking, well, what would my ideal buyer, what would interest them in this property? Are they outdoorsy? Like I'm indoorsy. So if I'm writing for myself, I might not even be thinking about hunting or camping because these are things I personally don't do. So, but I have to step outside myself and think like my buyer would on that five acre parcel in Arizona that is rural. Well, what if somebody who's who likes rural living or would want this raw land, how would they think, how would they feel? What keeps them up at night? And then it's kind of an interesting thing to do and, and craft and um, copywriters will tell you that 80% of their time is actually spent on the headline and doing just research on their buyer. And we talk a lot about this during boot camp uh, as well when we do our advanced marketing segment. But um, it's it's something to really start getting in the habit of doing and thinking about um, every single day is what is my ideal buyer? What are they gonna, what, what do they, you know, eat for dinner? What do they do? Um, what do they care about? What are their dreams? What are their ambitions? Um, and start crafting your messaging that way and testing and seeing where are you landing and where are you missing and just being completely um, open about it. Like, like Mike Zano would say, just beginner's mind about it and then let the data drive it and get super geeky with it. And then like, it's, it's, it, it, it'll really supercharge your marketing very, very quickly doing that. But to Tate's point and to Scott Bossman's point, if you're not consistently doing this, well, you're gonna get inconsistent results too. And maybe inconsistent data because your list doesn't trust you at some level because you're not showing up consistently uh, to do it. Or to Mike Zano's point, if you are just haven't even structured it properly to look like a deal, they won't trust you until you figure that piece out. So there's a little bit of work involved, but once you get it, the ROI on it is phenomenal. I'd say it's your, your, the best ROI on marketing out there. So and it's the one thing you own. So, I, you know, Scott Todd, I thought this was a really good, um, discussion topic and hopefully the listeners are going to get a lot of value from it, which leads us into our tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe a cone, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Dear buddy, the nightcap OG, by the way, I hope everybody's watching nightcap. Um, and, uh, I know you guys live in the rerun, but Scott Bossman, what is your tip of the week? Yeah, I have two tips. One is fun and one is practical. The practical one is everybody's always worried about water. What's the water table like? Uh, your, your buyers are worried about water. Um, new land investors are worried about water. I'm not so much worried about water anymore, right? Like, but that was one of my initial uh, worries. Like, oh my gosh, is there water on this property? So there's a website you can use nwis.waterdata.usgs.gov. And we'll have a can, link to that. 
Yeah, we'll have a link to it. Can you make that any more complicated, Scott Bossman? Like maybe you could have taken a little bit of time and created a Bitly link, something shorter. I, I don't have. I'm not that geeky. I I don't have Python, uh, so I gotta gotta work on that. There you go. That, that's something to improve on. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> you can search by county and area, and you can you can really zoom in and you can see what maybe the water table is like in a particular area. You can see how deep a well is that's been uh, dug in a particular area you're working. So it could maybe help with some general due diligence information. All right. Well, before you get to your fun tip, I just want to remind the listeners that we have a sponsor this week. It's Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Solve not just your money problems, solve your time problems. Start building your passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Oh, yeah and go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your land geek Sherpa. He'll get you up there quickly, safely, and efficiently. Oh yeah, and that investment in flight school ain't gonna cost you nothing. You're gonna make that money back 180 days or less. Just show us your work, guaranteed. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a call. Landgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Bossman, what's your second tip of the week? Uh, so this is my fun tip of the week. Being that I work at home now, I have more time to read, listen to music, whatever. So I would highly recommend listening to the 500 greatest albums of all time on rollingstone.com. It's been very cool. I'm, for, I'm through the first 100 albums. I went through the first 100 albums in the last year, and I'm finding some new favorites. So for those of you working at home, trying to pass the COVID time, I'd recommend going through the list. Of that list, which which has been the biggest surprise for you? Uh, I'll tell you uh, right now. Uh, the biggest surprise for me was Linda Ronstadt. Like you guys may remember her from the seventies, Mark and Scott. I, Todd, I, I <laughs> we, I do. Oh, 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 oh. Tate, Tate has no idea. We got an amazing album. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Mark, did he just take a swipe at us? Shot. No. Shot. Most certainly. A ageism yeah. is, is alive and well on the round table. Wow. <laughs> and notice, notice, like, Kate's not saying anything because he's like, who's Ron the he's, he's He's Googling, I'm Googling Linda Ronstadt right now. I'm Googling it right now. <laughs> her yeah, her album, uh, Heart Like a Wheel, I would highly recommend. Heart Like a Wheel. Yeah. Okay. Um. Tate would appreciate this. I was talking to a, a friend the other day. We were talking about music. And, um, and I said, you know, I, I love rap. And they're like, oh, it's so surprising. And they're, I'm like, I, I love Kanye. And they're like, immediately dismissed it because of, of his personality. And I'm like, come on, you got to separate the artist from the person. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, there's some other he's cases. Genius, right? He's, he's a, a genius, right? He's a genius. You know, treads that line. He's a genius. He's a genius. So I was like, okay. So I started sending them music. I'm like, just listen to it. And it was like, you know, like when you, you take like a bite of food for the first time that you think you're not going to like and your eyebrows go up, you're like, oh, this is good. That was, that was the response. I could not have been more pleased. So what, what was the song that generated that response? Runaway. Oh yeah, that's that's a genius. That album is amazing. That, the whole album is amazing, yeah. but we digress. Um, I want to thank the listeners and uh, remind them that the only way we're going to be able to get Scott Bossman to keep coming on the Roundtable podcast with tips of the week or Taria or whomever is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review. Support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less, for free. All right. Are we, are we good, Scott Todd? Yeah, I'm just plotting a little revenge for uh, Scott Bossman. That's all. That's all. I'm just he I'm is like finally off. And, and what's, see, here's, how, here's how I knew that the swipe was after us. Here's how I knew it was after us, right, Mark? Because Zeno was born in the same year as us, and he got <laughs> left out of it. 
<laughs> That's true. That wasn't very nice. Yeah. yeah maybe, you know, Zeno's so young at heart. It does, he doesn't, it doesn't feel like he's our age. Are we all 50 this year? Mm hmm. No, nowhere close to that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the big year for you is the trio. Yeah. I don't know. Mark, you're 50 I'm, this year? I'm Doc? 50 this year. Yeah. And Zeno? I'm 50 this yeah. year. Oh, oh, the five. four of us. Oh. Oh. Look at, look at that, Scott Bossman. There was another swipe you could have made. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I would never have swiped a Tria that way. Ever. Not yet. Hey, Tria, what yeah. month is your birthday? November. November. Uh, uh, Marx is in June. Mike? June. 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 I'm October. There you go. Two October. June. October, right. November. There you go. We're going to bring the year out correctly. Yeah. I'll tell you what we should do as our networking event. Uh, you know, maybe like a 50th type of theme. That would be awesome. I like it. 50 Play ways to, to, you know, grow your land business. Play Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I'm telling you. That's good stuff. It, it, Tate, 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 Tate will probably like not, not equate. He's like, I don't, I don't get it. I'll take a siesta. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Eric, you've been very quiet this podcast. I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen a rib reason. I guess it's just a quiet day. It's a quiet day. Or, okay. Or a distracted day. I don't know which. Mark, no worries. on Sunday, I think Sunday, my wife and I went to eat lunch at this place and we're walking in, I look over at the big sign out front, you know, like how they all have the restaurants on there, whatever. And I see this restaurant I never heard of before. And underneath it, it said, um, uh, what, spi what, uh, Eric, what's the chicken? The spicy chicken? Uh, oh, what, what's Nashville hot? Nashville hot chicken. Nashville hot chicken. Nashville, it said, hot. Nashville hot chicken. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look, there's like a Nashville hot chicken place over here. And then... Today, we went back to that same place. And as I was walking, uh, as we were there, we noticed like that restaurant was wow. Like it, there was so many people in that one restaurant. It was insane. And I'm thinking like, Eric might have the secret recipe over there. Either that or that chicken place is just a front for another business like you might see on Breaking Bad or something. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, my takeaway was on that story was when you couldn't think of Nashville chicken, because I have these senior moments all the time. You went to Eric to get the, not not because like, it would have been great if you went to Boston and he was like, I, you know, I don't know. And we could have just been like, oh, that that young, nimble mind. Right. Not, you know. I see where you went with that, but, you know, my, my sharp mind is going to the guy that would know because oh, all I think Tennessee. that Boston would know is like cheese or something. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, it's pretty good. You, you, look at Zeno with that, that look. He's, he, even he says, you guys couldn't see the facial expression. He's, he's just stirring the pot there. Oh, I'm just so happy that Scott Boston volunteered to remove uh, Scott Todd's, uh, you know, you know, presence like, trying to take me down. Scott Bossman just removed it, just like that. I'm, I'll, I'll, just, still... I'll, just, I'll just come back next week to the round that, table Scott. and I'll... I'll kowtow to Scott Todd like you do. You just, you trash Ooh. him online one week and then next week you kowtow to I, I'm able to, to separate, like... I'm able to separate, you know, what brings results from, See? you know, having some Case drink. Point. Know, I, I could put aside, I, I've heard Scott Todd say that. He's just, he's, he's sort of agnostic to software. What, what brings the results? That's what I'm focusing on. All right. Now, I will tell you that uh, YouTube is not helping Mike Zeno. Oh. It really is not because, <laughs> because I partially watched, remember like we had that podcast where I showed uh, the Mike Zeno like Halloween picture. I zoomed in on that one. Remember that? Well, yeah. YouTube one wants me to go back and finish watching that. So it keeps showing up on my homepage and there I see Mike sitting there. And what I did not realize until, until, YouTube brought this to my attention 
is Mike Zeno did not just have the bald cap on, but he had a captain's hat on too. He kept taking it on and off. I didn't know that part. So YouTube, like I looked at, I'm like, oh, YouTube, thanks for sharing Zeno's secrets with me. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is Mike Zeno is not off the hook. Well, YouTube, as long as it keeps bringing back up to me, like reminders, I'm like, we got a lot of content coming to YouTube this year. It's going to push that way down. Let's hope so. In, in the meantime, like while you guys are talking, I'm, I'm doing an ad on Fiverr for a video VA to go out and take clips of Mike, you know, doing any, any kind of making fun of Scott Todd, just like a, like a, just a, a, a montage of it. So that we can all look forward to that. We need to include that picture from last week of Mike in that montage. Oh yes. <laughs> no, we don't. That one carrying the podium. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. All right, well on that, are we ready to do this? Uh, yeah. One, two, three, let's, let's freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. Nice. That was actually really good. And we should give, uh, because yesterday was uh, Martin Luther King Day, we should give him some props. Look, good artists. I shouldn't say it, but you know what I'm talking Don't about. Don't say it, Mark. Don't say it. I Don't won't say it. it. Anyways, um, we already did our bonus content. For those who are just listening <laughs> to the podcast for the first time, this is usually when we kind of go off the rails is after that. And so the people that want to listen to it do. We didn't really give them a choice this time. Well, then we should hang up. We All should right, hang up. Home. Yeah. Yeah. Tate, what are you eating for lunch today? I don't know. I was just thinking about that. I'm thinking I'm kind of craving a uh, poke. Poke. Actually. Yeah. I got to nice. see if my daughter... My daughter loves it. It's like her favorite food. So uh, she eats let's see it if raw? she wants to go. She eats the yeah, she, yeah, she loves it. Wow. She's got expensive taste. I'm a little concerned. Well, that's that's what the land business will do to you. I like to blame Uncle Mark for that, but uh, you know, I'm not sure how yet. But I'll come up with a way. Uh, look, I'm, I'll probably take it. Uh, um, yeah, you know. My, you know, my kids won't even go into Panera. You know. You've done well. You've done well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.